Hello, fabric and fiber friends. My name is Christine, and thank you for joining me here today. Whether you're returning for another visit or this is your first visit, I appreciate it. Um, if I'm not over here, I am on Instagram as at Modern Middle Me and on the internet as www.modernmiddle.me. It's been a moment. I don't even know what happened to the last month. It just went by. Um, so we will catch up on all of that in a minute. It is Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. I am drinking a local cold brew from a roastery in the next town over with a shot of apple syrup and some oat milk because even though it is officially fall, it is gross. I was going to say hot, but it's more that sticky and humid out there. Um, it's also 80 degrees, which makes it hot, but it's not a hot coffee day. So, um, since I've last been here, school has started. And hopefully we'll stay started. Um, both kids have had fantastic transitions, so I'm trying to just enjoy that and be appreciative for that. Um, cause I know that's not the case for everybody. Uh, and when they went back to school, I decided that I was going to do some cleaning, like some like big cleaning, not just like the dusting and the vacuuming, like hardcore, like purge the garage and focus on trying to get the basement in order because there are boxes down there that we moved two years ago that have never been unpacked. Actually, there's boxes down there from when we moved two and a half years ago to a temporary house before we moved to this house. And those boxes haven't been packed, unpacked. And I think that even some of those boxes were in storage for the year that we were trying to sell our last house. So. Goodness knows what I'll find, um, but it should be interesting. All that to say, um, it's been busy. It's been noisy. There's been a lot of work on our street, um, not on our street, but in the houses that flank us, which is difficult to blog or vlog in. Um, it's difficult to do anything in. I'm trying to find a job, but that's, a, that's another vlog. We'll, we're not even going down that route, but I've also been sewing and a little bit of knit. I think a little bit of knitting. Yes. A little bit of plotting at least of what I'm going to do next. So I finished some Roman shades for my friend, um, which is one of my commission projects I talked about last time. I, maybe I'll do another little post about that, but those are done. Uh, that feels amazing. I have finished another project for another friend that I can't, I don't know when I'll be able to talk about that one. And then you'll notice I guess I should have led, this is like talking about bearing the lead, should have led with this, but you'll notice that the design wall behind me, which way is it? It's this way. It's empty. It's empty. Um, which means that the project that's been up there for more months than I actually want to admit, it's done. So I'm not even going to attempt to hold it up on the screen yet today. Uh, there's still a million little strings that need to be trimmed off um, and I need to give it a final press and it needs to go off to the long armor ASAP so that it doesn't languish any longer. 
a lot of eyes today. I'm sorry. I'm out of practice, but it's time. And this isn't even a fair shot of it because you can't tell that it's on point. Which, holy cow. Whew. I knew what I was getting into when I decided to create it this way. But I didn't know what I was getting into. And I will never do it again. I mean, never say never because I'll probably do it again in like three months. But I might be scarred for life from this one but it's done. I know I've talked about this before, but I think it was really a long time ago. So we'll discuss it again. It is with one and a little bit of a second one charm packs, a bunch of solids that I had in my stash to coordinate. And then this, my neutral is actually Kona shell. Um, because light pink can be a neutral too. Let's see what else. Oh God, there's a lot of strings. I don't know the measurements quite yet because I haven't done that part, but it's my wingspan. So I felt like it was going to be huge. And in the end, it wasn't. It just kept getting, I mean, I know that happens when you sew blocks together that you lose half an inch if I have, you know, keep losing these little pieces, but I don't know. I think for all the time I spent on it, I was expecting it to be bigger. Okay. But let's take a moment. It's done. <sighs> part of me wants to rush and put something new on the wall immediately. And the other part of me is like, oh, maybe I should just appreciate the blank canvas. That said, I'm probably not going to do that. And there will probably be something on the wall by next week. But that's fine. Uh, uh, so many ahs. Uh, I finished that other project. I know I've talked about this. I Yes, I know I've talked about this and I've shown it. I think I've shown myself. I know I've shown myself working on it. So that's. But yet I'm still surprised that I actually finished before some of the other things I have going. It is, oops, cake mix recipe number four with the Jen Kingwell Winky Pop layer cake. Ooh, ooh. That's just one of the fabrics. You'll see some more in a minute. And my favorite, my favorite, Essex Pickle. I decided to do block number three for my, I'm all backwards today and I don't know why. Block number three for my layout. Um, but so I sewed together as many blocks as I need for a four, by four quilt, which brings you up to 60 by 60 finished. So four by four is 16 math, which means I sewed together 32 different pieces of paper um, to do my little squares. I had a lot of grays and I ended up changing out some of those. So I do have some leftovers that I think I'm gonna make like one gray on gray with pickle square for the backing. Um, Cause I'm probably gonna piece the backing for this. I don't know what it is yet, but I will probably piece it. Um, but here it is. I'm whispering, I'm whispering a lot and I'm not sure why. I think I'm still adapting to being in the house with just two dogs, a couple of hedgehogs and a bearded dragon. They don't care. I talk to myself all the time. So why am I whispering? Okay. So again, not a full shot, but oh my goodness. I immediately thought, I went back and forth on this. It's like, I'm never doing this again. 
and I'm totally doing this again. I actually think that if you're looking to get into quilting and you haven't started yet, this is the way to do it. Uh, while all of my points aren't perfect because I got a little bit lazy <laughs> towards the end, I'm not going to lie, I got, I got bored. I was just like in a funk. I don't know what my issue was. It was a general life funk, but the points come out so nice on this. Um, with the, because what you're doing is you're sewing together on the dotted lines and then you're trimming on the solid lines and you're pressing them open. And then you have these squares that if all of those things have been done correctly, which I don't, you'd have to work hard to not do that correctly. You end up with these perfect corners, which end up being perfect points for the most part. I definitely... I wouldn't, if you're doing it for the first, if this is your first quilt, I would not use, I would use two quilting cottons. I wouldn't use an Essex linen because that was definitely where some of, or a thicker canvasy, a sturdier fabric than what your layer cake is made out of. But, because I definitely, that was part of the issue for me at times. So happy. Love this one. So, and everything is stringy. Okay. Sorry, I'm throwing them onto my work table behind you so that I can make my way down my pile. So that alone, two quilt tops, one of which is getting pressed and de-stringified and going off to the long armor. Ooh, sorry, puppy. And the other is probably going to get quilted here because um, I have an idea of what I want to do for that. And I have the cotton and seal thread that Silky, I believe it is, puts out that matches the Essex pickle perfectly. So I think it's just going to happen here. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so those were my two tops. I think the majority, I mean, the majority of my sewing time though has really been non quilts related. And I don't, I don't know why that is. Like the coffee is gonna let me know what it is, but. It didn't kickstart a thing. Um, the other, so let's talk about the non-quilty things and maybe it'll come to me why I took a little quilty break. Maybe just Friday. This is called the Seemingly Sane Pouch. Seemingly is spelled S-E-A. M-I-N-G-L-Y. I believe you can find her on Instagram as at seemingly, S-E-A-M-I-N-G-L-Y dot sane. Uh, Courtney is her name. I'm not sure of her last name, but she is the pattern designer behind this. And I actually bought a kit from Stitch Supply Company that had all of the components you needed. And I thought, I love this fabric combination, first of all. And I thought, oh my goodness, like, yeah. This is perfect. I don't wanna actually have to think too, just send me the things I need. Sometimes I just need somebody to send me the things I need. I'm de-stuffing it so that you can see. So it has this cute, I've mentioned it before, I'm obsessed with these ring zippers. It has a ring zipper in pink and blue that matches this print, so cute. Um, and then the contrast bands are also the lining. And I, I didn't quilt this at all. I mean, I did the two accent lines, but it's just fusible fleece with some SF 101 interfacing on both the fusible, on top of the fusible fleece and then on the lining to give it the body. 
but it's adorable. I think I need to buy some more of these for holiday gifts. I was going to say teacher gifts, but I don't know if I want to commit to that yet. But it's so cute. It was <sighs> so whenever a pattern says sane or crazy or anything that alludes to the fact that it might actually be crazy, even if it's saying sane and not insane, I tend to wonder if I'm going to be insane by the end of it. That was not the case with this. Um, super thorough instructions really clear illustrations where needed um, or photographs. I don't actually remember in the patterns way over there. But an enjoyable morning. I have the supplies to make some more. I'm going to make some more. I just need to get my zippers. But that was fun. Oh, <laughs> it was a fun morning. Not a fun morning or afternoon or the whole weekend that I've spent on these so far was I am making curtains for my room, my bedroom. And part of that is because I can't find curtains that make me happy that don't. Okay. Let me back up for her. I can't find curtains that make me happy that don't cost a fortune. And considering I have two dogs and two kids who tear through their, like, I don't know, it's the Indy 500, I don't want to spend a lot of money on curtains. Or my bedding, I don't want to spend a lot of money. Like, when they're older and out of the house, yes, maybe then it will be beautiful and lovely. Not now. So I had a gift card to a local fabric shop, and I bought the perfect rust. Can you see that? And the perfect... I'm obsessed with this fabric line, Warp and Weft. Love it. All I wanted to do, let's just say there's been a comedy of errors and a simple project has become not so simple. Not so simple and frustrating. That said, I'm like so close to the finish line I just need, you know what I need? I honestly, I need to clear the table off, the kitchen table off, lay them out and make sure that they all have, because I have the bottom. I don't know if I said this because I haven't clearly had enough coffee yet. Mm, let's see. So here's the top and then this is the bottom. I know that the bottoms are all the same height. I know that they're all the same height. I just need to go back and make sure that all of my rod pocket, like where my rod pockets fall on each one is exactly the same. Because you know that if one of those is off, then you're not going to have a solid line of navy at the bottom. You're going to have like a zigzag. And that would drive me absolutely batty. Like that just can't happen. So I need a day to do that. Um, we'll see if that actually happens. Okay. And next up, oh. hold on a moment. Should have picked something a little more refreshing. Maybe like iced tea. That has caffeine, it would still work. I spoke last time, I think, about wanting to make the Remy Raglan. It was such an easy pattern to make. Literally a few hours. No serger needed because you're dealing with 
non-knit, non-knit fabric, and everything is an enclosed seam. The way it has you assemble it. Uh, so, like I said, I might do another post about this, but I'm not putting it on right now. But <laughs> it's super cute and it was super fun. I think I need to make another one. Well, I, I mean, I definitely need another one in my life regardless, but I think I need to make it the next size up, even though I made it true to what my size normally is in pat in this line of patterns. And I measured. I'm still not sure it's the right size for me in the long run. So I'll have to like, I do have some more fabric, so I might just make another. This is kind of like I bought this fabric knowing that it was a muslin which means not a final project necessarily, but if it worked out that way, so be it. Um, and I'll totally wear it, but I do want to play around a little more and I want to play around and hope that I don't end up having to grade this between two different sizes. Um, because I think my hips are definitely a bigger size than my shoulder area. So the smart thing would be to just suck it up and grade it, but So this is another, this will be like one of those extra shots that comes up soon. Cause I have more to say on that, but this is like more of a general quilting. This is quilting on caffeine. Vlog number 11 titled, I don't know what yet, but I'm trying to keep it to the quilting. So speaking of, <laughs> speaking of quilting, worst segue ever. I took a quilting class with Marge Tucker through the New Hampshire Modern Quilt Guild. It was quilting with your walking foot. I was not expecting, I was expecting to like it. I was expecting to enjoy it. I was not expecting to love it. I kind of loved it. And nobody's more shocked than I am about that. Um, we started with like the basics. And then we did some different techniques. The first couple I didn't really, like it was good practice and she had so many tips and techniques that were like, Oh, that's so smart. That's so smart. Why didn't I think of that? But I was like, this is good. This is good. This is a couple of them. I was like, this is so not my jam. And other people are like loving it. So I just went and got another coffee during that portion of the class. But then I totally found triangles. Trying to find out. I don't know which way I just held up, but. I'm obsessed. I have, I mean, I have two half square triangle quilts right there, which I could make this work on. Um, really what I want to do is make a Christmas tree quilt and make quilts on my triangles like that. But that was like a lot of fun. And we learned how to do curves and circles. I don't think I'm going to do curves and circles with my walking foot on the regular. Just putting that out there. But she's made it a lot more approachable. Like, okay, maybe I can do this. That I'm talking really fast today, or maybe it just feels that way. Maybe it's because I haven't been here for so long. I don't know what I'm doing. Hold 
I am also doing the Hocus Pocus quilt by Pattern Basket, I believe is the name. And I'm not very far along because there's a lot of tiny pieces to cut out. I didn't really read it. I kind of just jumped in and then I got to that and I was like, Whew. cut 81 and one quarter by one and one quarter squares. That's very little. But. Oh. Okay, I know it looks like an apple right now, but I swear it's a little pumpkin. And you'll realize that when there's other little pumpkins scattered around. How cute though. So this is not, I don't feel like this is my style really. And I definitely don't love that I accidentally framed this print, but it's done and there's other blocks that will distract from all that and everything else. So I'm not worrying about it. Not my style really, but oh, maybe I just needed something cute and fun right now because this is totally hitting it for me. Um, the last class is like the 1st of October. I mean, I'm not gonna be ready for that or done at that point, but such a good project for when you don't, I don't know, well, you just need like a little bit of a palette cleanser. I mean, I guess that's really what I was calling like my Remy Raglan and my pouch and my drapes and my room and sheet. Like talk about having so many things going that have nothing to do with a flat quilt. I guess that's my specialty. I feel like A, I've talked about so much, but I feel like I'm missing something. Even though I've finished like a lot, of, like I feel like, holy cow, that's probably been my most prolific three weeks of my like three years probably. I don't know, it feels weird. I need to be here more often because this is disjointed. But moving on, last quilts project that I'll talk about today. Maybe, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Last quilt project that I'll talk about today is the Curated Quilts Mini Challenge. A few months ago, I entered the Parallelogram? Polygon. Polygon quilt. <laughs> Polygon mini quilt challenge and was accepted, which was exciting. And then this challenge rolled around and I was like, I was going to be in it regardless. Um, I found that creating and quilting to a creative brief was really good for like getting me motivated and out of a rut. This one was a little different and I'll get into that in a second. But I still found again, yet again, that quilting to somebody else's color palette kind of and expectations was invigorating and motivating and the smaller size, which is not something I dabble in willingly, was good for me to kind of take a beat. And the majority of this was quilted right in that last week before we went back to school, pieced and quilted before we went back to school. So I think it was like timing wise, a good like small project to have. So the theme this time was collaboration the theme of the magazine is collaboration and i believe that the challenge quilt was combination but it should have been a collaborative effort i'm not super clear but i used both of those <laughs> to drive me towards what i'm about to show you so my collaborative team was my family and 
think that was because okay my collaborative team was my family I don't think I know it was because we've just gone through 20 months together all the time they've been my team for all of COVID prior to COVID but I just felt like I've moved away from in-person things, events, meetings, everything um, right now, especially if you're, I don't want to be sewing in a group of people with masks on right now. It's just not where I'm like, that doesn't fulfill me at all. Online, that's fine because we don't, we can be in our pajama pants and mask free and that's great. But for the collaboration aspect, I felt that my family was most representative of where I was at the moment in time. And then the combination was not only the design, but doing yet another thing with my family, which I love them dearly, but I think we all needed a little breather that school is providing. So two of my family members helped pick the palette. The third helped me with a few design decisions and with some quilting feedback, whether it was wanted or not. I pieced the whole thing because that was a step too far to piece with my children on a deadline. Um, I feel like I'm a hot mess right now, but <laughs> find it I swear there we go so the palette was dictated that 70% was the neutrals that they provided which is all the background the browns the grays and the other 30% was up to us and the 30% that my youngest and my husband chose were the brights that you see in here I keep forgetting that you can't see what I'm looking at so, and I really wanted it to be, I wanted a graphic shape. I wanted a circle because I felt like that show was coming together. Um, the circle is made up of different pieces because I think that you can be very disparate and different and still come together in a beautiful way. And then the quilting just shows that when you come together as a team, as a group, as a unit, you can move forward to one point. I'm so backwards today. I don't know what my problem is. Sorry. Um, this is also posted as a still on my Instagram account if you wanted to see it without it shaking um, and to read a little bit more of my thoughts that were cohesively put together and not put together while I'm sitting here trying to drink coffee and get ready for school to let out. Um, so this is my submission. If it's chosen, that's awesome. If it's not, it's going to hang in a little nook in my house because I think It represents so much of what my family is right now. Um, so there you have it. A mini quilt, 16 by 16 inches. Oh, I think you thought we were done. We're not. Um, so you can kind of see that the quilting is really fluffy. I did not use wool batting in this. I used um, two layers of bamboo batting, which I think is going to be my, my I'm obsessed. Um, obsessed with, I love bamboo batting and the two layers of it just like opens up a whole new world of possibilities for me, much to my wallet's despair because my wallet's already unhappy with me. <laughs> um, because I have been making some acquisitions, but I'm saving that for another day because I can't, I can't. Um, so that's 
my cards in. I do have one knitting finish. I actually have a couple of things that I've finished, but they're not blocked yet. Um, this is blocked. The ends are not woven in and it's not seamed yet. But it doesn't matter because it's still too hot to wear it. So. <laughs> and it is the shift cowl. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, the shift cowl. I feel like everybody and their mother, if they're a knitter, has made this. I feel like a bunch of people have done it as knit alongs. I'm super late to this game. This has been out for a while. But when my local yarn shop started carrying Primrose Yarn Company, I couldn't resist. So it's actually knit out of Primrose Yarn on size seven needles to get gauge, which I think is a size up from what the pattern calls for. I think it's fun. I mean, it will eventually get, maybe I'll weave in the ends tonight while watching, watching fall TV, cause TV is back now. Um, it's my guilty little pleasure. Maybe I'll seam it together then and weave in my ends. But it's almost done, so I'm calling it a finished object, even though that's a lie. I have some other projects on my needles right now. I'm not committed really strongly to any of them. I've had a little bit of a yarn binge. A little nervous for when people realize how much yarn I bought recently. I have a super fun project to share next time. Next vlog, not next time I post, because I do think I'm going to post about the Remy and maybe the Roman Shades, but we'll see. Um, but I think right now what I'm most excited for is the blank wall behind me. Um, it feels so good to finish that up. I don't know that I'm keeping that one because I don't know. There's a lot of feelings, but we'll see. We'll get it quilted and we'll take it from there. So that's it. I hope that you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you are watching this. I hope you enjoy this weekend. I hope you have beautiful fall weather this weekend. I hope we have beautiful fall weather this weekend. Literally, as I'm saying this, there are clouds rolling in and I feel like it's getting darker and darker. Um, but have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you come back again. If you have I'm going to try to put everything in the notes down below. If you have any questions or comments or advice on those quilt tops, leave it in the comments. Thank you.